Ninja. Dark Devourer is a Rarity 7 Heavy Bow Gun in Monster Hunter World. It's made out of Devil Joe materials because it's the new Devil Joe Heavy Bow Gun. You will need a Devil Joe gem in order to finish upgrading it. Its previous upgrade, Gluttonous Cannon, isn't bad either if you wanted to start using it early. The weapon model is actually one of my favorite Heavy Bow Gun designs since it looks more like the monster and less like a bow gun. The shield mod gives it a wing similar to what you would get with the Legia Shattercrist. Dark Devourer is the new highest damage heavy bow gun in the game. It comes with a negative 25% affinity, which is alright because based on the ammo types, we're going to be building for explosive ammo types, and explosive ammo ignores enemy weak spots as well as affinity. Note that while it does say that it has no element, it really does. It has the dragon ammo, and that means the elementless skill will not work with this gun. The deviation is high, and the special ammo type is Wyvern Heart. That's a bad combination, because it means you're going to be spraying bullets everywhere while you are auto-firing your clip. So notice for mods, I went with Shield, of course, because the Shield mod's really good for survivability. Recoil. Recoil increases your rate of fire, and it makes it, you know, a little easier to handle the weapon as well. And finally, Deviation. Unfortunately, you don't get much from a second recoil mod, although you do from a third recoil mod. That would mean giving up your shield. And the same can be said with reload mods. So reload mods help you reload your weapon faster, and in this case, they don't really help the gun too much. So I took deviation to help with aiming the sticky ammo and for Wyvern Heart. Finally, I'll just point out that this weapon does get two augmentation slots, just like the Magna Gametis, which is really nice because it means you don't need a hero streamstone, you just need a warrior streamstone. Well, you need four of them, but honestly, you'll get four of those before you get one hero streamstone because they're so rare. So for the augmentations, you probably want to go at least one health recovery, and then I would actually skip attack or affinity and go for a decoration slot. That's why I'm recommending. Okay, moving right along, the ammo capacity on this weapon is very similar to the popular Magda Gametis, with a large amount of sticky and cluster ammo being available. However, it doesn't get recovery ammo or paralysis ammo, while gaining the level 1 sleep ammo and slicing ammo, as well as trading out the armor ammo for demon ammo. So, that, I would say that's mostly a net positive. Now that we've gotten a look at the gun's attributes, we need to talk about the skills we'll be bringing onto the build. Since we're going to be using a lot of sticky cluster and wyvern ammo, we're going to want to build the free element ammo up skill, as well as artillery and Zenajiva divinity. This strategy of having larger clips and a chance not to expend the ammo is really important for the explosive ammo types, since their biggest problem is that you have to constantly reload and eventually you run out of them in your pouch. Notice we don't worry about the attack skill or anything involved with affinity or crit damage. And the reason for that is because attack doesn't really seem to change the explosive damage very much. And as I said earlier, explosive ammo types ignore weak spots and affinity. What's so nice about these ammo types is that they also ignore the Elder Dragon shields, and in this case the Dark Devourer actually has dragon ammo, so that you can actually try to knock an Elder Dragon out of its enraged mode. For the rest of the skills that I brought, you'll notice I do have the Bombardier skill, since I'll be putting the monster to sleep so much. You could probably trade those out with the Miasma Gems whenever you go to fight Valhazak. I also brought the Guard Up skill so that I can block the most powerful attacks in the game, like Teostra's Supernova. When we talk about Heavy Bowgun build, we also have to talk about item management. In fact, more than any other weapon in the game, it seems you do the most item management with Heavy Bowguns. So if you aren't familiar with creating item loadouts, and you're just getting started with the Heavy Bowguns, now's a great time to learn. You simply choose Manage Items, and then press Start to see your loadouts. With the Dark Devourer, you can see I've brought a lot of the things I'll need in order to craft more ammo in the middle of the fight. I've also brought barrel bombs and traps, everything I need to keep using my most powerful moves and meaningful setups when he goes to sleep. For the ammo types that I bring, I basically bring them all, because in this case, they're pretty much all good. You know, I can't really think of any that I would want to leave behind. Maybe the normal ammo too isn't so necessary, but you know, that's about it. 
Okay, now let's talk a little bit about combat. If you're soloing, you might give your Palico the Bond Ball so that he can help you put the monster to sleep. Note that anytime the monster becomes enraged, you can switch to exhausting him or putting him to sleep at that point. If you exhaust him, that's a good time to line up all of your cluster bombs. If you put him to sleep, that's when you can use your barrel bombs and reload. Be careful that you get the wake up attack in time on him though, because if you wait too long, the monster will actually just wake up on his own. When the monster is up and moving about, I would try to land sticky ammo on his head since that ammo type does cause stun, and if you brought slice ammo, I would typically aim for his tail to try and help sever it, though if you're fighting the new Devil Joe monster, he doesn't have a weak spot on his tail so that might be a waste of time. Be mindful of your teammates and let them know when you're going to start using certain ammo types like sleep or exhaust. Maybe try to say something like sleep in three popular languages. So like, uh, you know, like English and Spanish, something like that. I, I would think about doing that because a lot of the time randoms don't realize you're about to use sleep ammo and they just wake the monster up early before anyone takes advantage of it. All right, well, overall, I'm going to have to put the Dark Devourer in the upper A tier. It's a great heavy bow gun, beating out Magda Gametis with a bit more damage, except for cases where the monster is actually weak to paralysis and not sleep. It's also not as good at supporting your team since it lacks recovery ammo, and so I would say there are at least some cases where these two heavy bow guns are quite close to each other, and you might actually take the Magna Gametis over the Dark Devourer. And that concludes my guide for the Dark Devourer. I want to thank you all for watching. This is my first heavy bowgun build, although I've been low-key playing the hell out of these guns. I really love them. And I will be having more heavy bowgun reviews coming up in the future, so keep an eye out for that. And with that being said, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.